We await the opening of this 10-round bout between George Foreman and Gregorio Parola. If you're viewing in color, Parola in the white trunks, Foreman in the blue and black and white. Parola in the light trunks, Foreman in the dark. Foreman at 213, Parola 198. Parola, the seasoned fighter, ninth rated among the heavyweights, the first testing challenge for the 21-year-old Foreman, who has only fought 15 times professionally, but won 13 by way of knockout. Parola with 85 bouts under his belt. 73 victories, five defeats, seven draws. Parola will use his experience trying to stay away from the bigger, stronger, younger man. Foreman with a left that is like a lamppost. A recurring piston, if you will. Two minutes left in round one. Parola, white trunks, Foreman, blue. See the way Foreman keeps using the left, and Parola coming back with two quick lefts. Parola is largely a left hand fighter, left arm fighter. But a good competitor, very smart. Minute and a half left in the round. tying George up on the inside. Now about a minute to go in the round. Into New York State scoring rules, we have a mandatory eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell. Three knockdowns in a given round is the automatic end of the fight. Foreman moving downstairs with a left to the midsection. <laughs> As you see, Peralta is using as a tactic, tying up George on the inside, preventing him from getting leverage and punching room. We have about 20 seconds left in round one. Approach the start of round two. George coming out quickly after Parola. Quick attack under the instructions of his manager, Dick Sadler. Took Parola by surprise momentarily. No, no, don't be misled. Foreman was off balance. Parola didn't get to him. Crowd will yell. Aggressiveness counts, as you all know, in the scoring. There's Peralta coming back with a good combination and with still another left. That left just got into George again and again. Lightly, but it got in there. George is likely to find Peralta, who is 35 years of age, who used to fight on his toes, but as he's gotten older, the way most of them do, now stands flat-footed and uses his experience and knowledge to stay alive. Look at that. Three consecutive lefts as he moved George backward across the ring. George is likely to find Parola a very cagey cut. Parola holding, though, as George lands a left and a right. We have about a minute and a half left in this, the second round. Gregorio Peralta of Argentina in the white trunks. George Foreman in the blue. 
light and black if you're watching and light and dark if you're watching in black and white. One minute left in the second round. Keep watching, if you will, the way Peralta will get to the inside and tie Foreman up just as George thinks he's got punching room. Those rights of Foreman's to the midsection may in the ultimate take their toll. Seem to do nothing at the time. A left by Foreman getting in there, but Peralta coming after him. Good left to the midsection by Peralta. Seconds left in the round. We're going to look at that good left now in slow motion that Foreman landed. There it is against Peralta. Start of round three, George Foreman against Gregorio Peralta. Foreman, blue trunks, Peralta in the white trunks. Quick note, interesting, you probably missed it. I'm sure you did, working Peralta's corner. Gil Clancy, the well-known manager of Emil Griffith, and... Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, close friend of Angelo Dundee, always works the corner with Angie for Jimmy Ellis. And it's interesting because, as you know, Peralta was recently to have fought Ellis in Buenos Aires in a fight that never did come off. Foreman pursuing Peralta at the moment. Again, George is working to the midsection, as he did in the prior round. Always Peralta throws the left, chasing Foreman partway across the ring with it. Peralta is essentially a one-armed fighter. Always the left. Rarely does he throw the right, and even more rarely does he land it effectively. Again, he's tying up Foreman on the inside. Less than two minutes to go, and this is the third round. Don't forget, tomorrow on ABC, NBA Basketball, New York versus Baltimore at 1.55 Eastern Time, followed at 4 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time by the American Sports. Again, Peralta tying up George on the inside. A classic fight in its way, even if not at this present second, exciting. A near slip by Peralta. Classic because it's youth against age. Inexperience against wisdom, guile against strength. Testing challenge for George Foreman tonight. We have one minute left in round three. Again, Peralta getting in a couple of quick lefts. George missing with the right. George pursuing with the left, but not landing really. Coming up, of course, the big one for the heavyweight championship of the world, Joe Frazier against Jimmy Ellis. Right after Foreman against Peralta, the bout you're watching. 30 seconds left in round three. Green speaking for itself as the round runs out. Slip, slip, no knockdown. The bell for round four as again we watch Foreman come out of his corner against Peralta. Various Unofficial scorecards at ringside indicate Foreman winning two of the rounds. 
second round being called even or for Peralta as they variously see. Unofficial barometer of scoring from men who've spent much of their lives covering boxing. on Peralta's part performing to flatten him if he ever does. A complaint, as you saw, to the referee from Peralta. I'd even have hit him. two minutes into round four. And George Foreman is having a very difficult time finding punching room against Peralta, who one minute backs off and the next minute ties him up. The crowd oohed and odd, but Foreman's left, which looked impressive, landed on Peralta's right arm. Peralta himself, as we've noted, essentially a one-armed fighter, the left, the left, the left. Does virtually nothing but the right. As the left into Foreman once and again twice. Only a half a minute to go and round four. Scheduled ten rounds. Foreman against Peralta. A good left by Peralta after a right by Foreman. Foreman was open. He had dropped the right and Peralta got the left in. End of round four. Let's have another look at that Peralta left. There's the glancing right by Foreman. Now the left that misses. Now there's Foreman's right down. Up comes the left. There it is. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Incidentally, as we go into round five with Foreman charging out again, Mark Kahn told this reporter that, yes, indeed, he was hit accidentally by that blow back in the fourth round. Well, why not? Why not? Well, crowd oohed over what some might have thought was a low left by Parola, and then Foreman came back with a good left to the right side of Parola's face. Foreman using the left more, and that's one of the things Sadler was apparently telling him in the corner. Now the crowd booing Foreman for the tactic you saw, holding him around the neck with the right and then hitting him with the left. A caution to Foreman from referee Mark Kahn. The crowd picking it up. We're a little over one minute into round five. excited about this fight because it's by far the most testing challenge the young Olympic champion has had professionally up till now. 
couldn't have expected otherwise because of Peralta's ranking and because of his experience. Again, a near slip by Peralta. A left, a glancing left by Foreman as Peralta was off balance. Did no damage. There is some blood over Foreman's right eye. It appears to be on the bottom. Yes, there is a slit just over Foreman's right eye. Perhaps you can detect it. Does not appear serious at this moment unless the flow of blood starts to go down into the eye. Now Foreman is belaboring Peralta, and for the first time, Peralta appears a little tired. Just 10 seconds left in round five with Peralta fighting back, but obviously tired. Blood over Foreman's right eye. Start around six. to two quickies by Foreman. Peralta counter punch for the good one. Peralta suddenly using the right. That's the second time in this round and really the first time in the bout that Peralta showed a right. Up till now, he's been a one-off fighter. A good right lead by Foreman that stunned Peralta just secondarily. Action's been much sharper in the last round and in this one. Experts around ringside unofficially make this a very close bout up till now. Perhaps Foreman slightly in the lead. Perhaps. <laughs> Sitting here at ringside, you can see red welts across Perala's midsection from the pounding that Foreman gave him there in the early round. Crowd yelling again over a Peralta chopping right. Red Smith, the famous syndicated sports columnist, just said Peralta's discovered a new punch. He's sitting around three seats from me down toward my left here at ringside. That cut has just been opened over Foreman's right eye again. So far, no real flow of blood from it. We have a little less than two minutes to go, and this is the sixth round. Foreman, the blue or dark trunks, Parola, the white or light. Correction, a little less than one minute. This is a good one, and it's going to be a good, good teaching experience for George Foreman. With Ten seconds left to go in round six. to my left is the official counter as we are await the start of round seven. For this bout is Tony Perez, a gifted young referee here in New York State. I hope you can see the material above Foreman's right eye that they placed there to stop the flow of blood. Dick Sadler, Foreman's manager, looks just a little bit worried.
Peralta fainting Foreman out of position and all off balance. He hasn't given Foreman punching room the way George has been getting it against more unworthy opponents all night. Good combination by Foreman. Coming in strongly against Peralta now. But Peralta taking the punches. Once Willie Pastrano never noted at the punch. Stopped Peralta in the fifth round, but that was because of cuts. Peralta has always been a determined competitor. as we have one minute left to go in this the seventh round. Foreman, slew or dark trunks against Peralta, light or white trunks. George must get that jab working against Peralta's face. It appears to set him up for the combinations that could perhaps put Peralta down. But as of now, he shows no ability to put them together. Not against this KG warrior. We have a half minute to go in round seven. Foreman, who's only had to go 10 rounds once in his professional life, although he's throwing leather, seems a little bit tired to this reporter. bell for round eight. That's Perala chasing him across the ring with that left. Crowd being excited by it. Brenner, the garden matchmaker, made an interesting observation this morning before the weigh-in. He said half the press says Peralta will be a soft touch for Foreman. And the other half says that I've overmatched Foreman too early in his career. Now, how do you figure that? In the meantime, it's a good fight. Two minutes to go, and this is the eighth round. Almost two minutes into round eight. Action is slowed in this round, as you have seen. As both, both fighters are uh, a little bit fatigued, but Peralta is used to fighting fatigued, and Foreman isn't. Left. 
They say for all are coming on in this bout. Again, a left by Peralta. A good right by Foreman there. Ten seconds left in the eighth round. Peralta has just thrown a left that landed against Foreman. Now he goes with a right. Some of the action back at ringside that took place in round eight. Don't forget, coming up after this, you've just seen Foreman connect with a looping right. Ellis against Frazier for the heavyweight championship of the world. Round nine. Tough fight for George Foreman. Unofficial scoring around ringside. Very close. Foreman slightly in the lead. Season Peralta doing just about what the matchmaker Teddy Brenner expected. Putting up a whale of a battle against the younger, stronger man, giving away 15 pounds, but using his experience to tie Foreman up on the inside, never to give Foreman the leverage for the thunderous lefts and rights that he was able to use as an amateur in his first 15 professional fights. Now Foreman got in a good left and a right and hurt Peralta. Peralta was hurt. Foreman going at him, but not putting him down. But Peralta hurt. Peralta calling on all his guile, trying to tie Foreman up inside. Foreman pushing him off. The crowd sensing the kill. Peralta now in the corner, as you see. Foreman flailing away at him, and not landing the one good punch that could put him down. truth it's a tired George Foreman and his punches don't have the power that they had early and he just can't put Peralta down a little more than a minute left in this the ninth round Peralta on the attack now not doing any damage but Peralta turning aggressive. This is what I meant by Peralta being a dogged competitor. It was a good left left by Foreman, but Peralta right in there and a good right too. seconds left of an exciting round with Foreman belaboring Peralta but Peralta gamely fighting back. The crowd is on its feet and cheering. The noise speaks for itself. Now in replay we see an exchange between Foreman and Peralta. Foreman hurting Peralta, having him against the ropes, hitting him with lefts and rights, largely to the midsection, a couple to the head. Peralta getting away from the ropes, Foreman pursuing him. Getting him in the corner, Peralta coming out of the corner, trying to tie Foreman up, not quite able to do it. But Foreman, younger, stronger, only 21, not able to put down the man of 35. The crowd responding to the courage of Peralta on the one hand and the aggressiveness of Foreman on the other.
We saw them shake hands. They're out there for round 10. George Foreman in the blue trunks. Or the dark trunks, if you're in black and white. And for all in the white trunks or the light trunks. The only sign of blood in the fight was Foreman's blood. Crowd yells as Peralta lands a right. As Peralta attempts to buffet Foreman with a couple of more rights. Foreman's blood above the right eye. A minor slit. Never amounted to anything up to this point. Best round in the fight for Foreman. The ninth round. The one just over. We're in the tenth. We have about two minutes left in the fight. Scoring on a round system, supplemental point system, if the rounds are even. This is a town for underdogs. It's the city of the Mets and the city of the Jets, and they love to see the underdog come on. looks really tired to this report. Really tough. He is doubtless in the lead in the scoring, but you never really know. This fight is not that widely disparate. combination to the head drawing upon inner resources trying to end it if he can less than a minute left in the fight that in fairness to Foreman he was off balance he was not hit he was not hurt crowd yelling because of their feeling for the underdog this has been one well of a 10 rounder even before the heavyweight championship fight. <laughs> 10 seconds left in the bout. We have been letting the roars of the crowd speak for themselves as the referee and the judges have rendered their decision. Now Johnny Addy. Five, four, one even, Foreman. 